All right, biometric analysis. We got Dawson here at 85. We've got Josiah at 93. Both similar weight, about around the 250 range. Six six to six three, so three inches taller. But I think you were you said you were an inch away in wingspan. So similarities there. 240 frames per second. Both 144 frames to front foot strike. We're going to go eight frames per click. We're going to follow the drive leg. Speed is inches per frame. Distance from origins, back foot on the rubber, and the X position is the horizontal measurement from that origin. Y is the vertical. We got front views, side views. Let's go six clicks in. That's 48 frames. Get an idea of the initial move. So just size 13 inches from the rubber, you're 12, so he's a little bit ahead of you at this point. Let's go another six. Let's go to 96 frames. He's 22 inches now to your 21, so still an inch ahead of you. He's taller though. His knee is at 19 to your 14. So you're holding your knee out better. He's collapsing his knee a little bit, pushing it in. Could affect his force production. So let's Let's just move it one frame per click. We're going to watch knee speeds, see who peaks the highest going into front foot strike. Looks like he hits a 4.3 or 4.5. So you holding torsion longer helped. Um, helped as far as generating a little bit more speed. I mean, 4.8. Could be very, you know, obviously could be just very close, very much the same. So similarities on the back leg there. Let's see distance when you hit front foot strike. So at 144 frames, his front foot hits at 88 inches from the rubber. Yours hits at 89. Wow. So you went one inch. What is it? One inch? Let's see. It's yeah, exactly one inch farther at your left toe. So good momentum. I think you even showed it. I think even on your force plate reading, you had you had four. You had more force production on your front leg. We didn't get accurate on your back leg because you were hooking the rubber. So good force production. I think as far as farther but it at the same time too you could have been reaching farther let's go back and look at the front foot um the front foot speed so if we watch let's just watch this toe here let's see where this toe is peaking okay it's an eight eight let's watch his toe Okay, it's a nine. So it's about the same speeds there. I'm just wondering if you were getting out a little bit earlier than he was. Okay, let's go back to front foot strike. All right, so let, let's see. You, I think you did a little better job there. Look at the hip position though at this point. 44 inches from the rubber to your 42, so you're an inch ahead of them. So your your hip is actually the same, except his front side looks more stable or just you're thicker that's probably what it is if we look at the front view we gotta get an indication of the shoulder separation this is probably going to tell us how well you separated let's take um, him to front foot okay so if we look at his right hip minus 10 so any the origin is down the middle of the body body so when it's a minus it's to the left of that which the hip would excuse me is minus 10 if we look at the, the shoulder it's at uh, 0.45 so he's you know a little bit more than 10 inches separated between his hips and shoulders so if we look at you front foot your right hip is minus 14 um, and you're at 0.3 so you're actually more separation so there's four inches uh, of more separation 
so that's good so uh, you know it's one thing that's what you're doing better you're you're staying closed you've got more torque between your hips and shoulders you also probably also too because could be because of your contralateral tilt so let's look oops let me, i'm going to go to the um to the hip or the middle of the hip so i'm going to go to the chin right to the belt buckle and up you're at 10 there do the same for him here. I'm gonna go chin, you know, belt buckling up, really not much. You know, maybe two or three. So that's what's helping you. You're a lot of you know good contralateral tilt, good hip to shoulder separation. Okay, so at this point, let's watch front knee. See if who stabilized front knee better. So as you move forward. He's at 72 inches from the rubber. He drifts a little bit, 73, 74, 75, you know, almost 76. So he loses three inches. You're at 73, drift a little, 74, 75, 76. You drifted three inches. And then you start to come back. You came back two inches, okay? So better. Your, your trunk even moved farther, it looks like. Okay. It's gonna be a tough one trying to figure out the difference here. I think some, hopefully something pops out. So let's look at the chin. Let's look at the chin. So his chin is at front foot strike is at 53, and yours is at 55. Okay. So let's take all the way to pitch release, 53 to, fifty-three to sixty-nine. So his is sixteen, right? Sixteen. Your yours is fifty-five. Pitch release. Fifty-five to seventy-seven. So that's that's good. That's twenty. Two. So 22 16. So you beat him there. Let's look at how the speeds look on it. Point 0.8. Okay, point 0.7. 6. 5. Okay, so point 0.8 to point 0.5. Okay, so we're seeing, am I looking at still? So you're seeing points, let's start at point 0.8, point 0.7, 6, 5, 4, okay. So I'd say better, a little better speeds. Now right now you've, you've beaten them pretty good. Let's see, all we have to left to look at is in the arm. Let's see what's going on in the arm. So let's watch his shoulder speeds. See where they peak. That's left, we do right. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 1. Okay, so his peaked at 108. Yeah, 108. Let's look at your shoulder speeds. 8, 7, okay, 1, 3. Okay, good. All right, let's look at elbow, 2.8. Two point two eight. I got you here. Two point two eight. I think it was his. Good. See wrist. Go with you 2.3, 3, 1, 3, 5, 3, 5, 4. Huh. It's wild. It's definitely a different story than what I've had up to this point. So, what we're seeing is if we walk it back, more speed in the back. You had more speed in the back knee, right? Yeah, more speed in the back knee. We also have your ground force readings. You 
Well, unfortunately, we didn't get a good read on your back leg drive. You had more front leg force production. You had similar front leg. Yours drifted, lost three, but gained two. We didn't look at your hips. Let's look at your hip speeds. So at front foot strike here, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. Okay, it looks like 0.7 was your peak. Let's look at his hip speed. Point six, point seven, eight. Okay, point eight. So more hip speed. Interesting. No, he does. A little, just like a tenth of a second more. Let's see, too, how much of those hips rotated. So let's see at front foot. It was at... I'm having to dig deeper with him to see if we can find more stuff. So it was at 47 inches. And then let's take it all the way to pitch release. 47 to 60. So that's 13. Yours was... 44, let's take it to pitch release, pitch release. Forty-four sixty. That's fourteen. Pretty much the same there. But he's he was his was a little bit faster. Trunk went significantly farther, a little bit faster. Shoulder went your shoulder went faster. Knee went no, no, not knee. Elbow went, no, his elbow went faster. His wrist went faster. The only thing going faster is the elbow and wrist and the hip. Let's see where if you had more hip to shoulder separation, you had more contralateral tilt. Hmm. It really could be something with your arm, man, with you. I think you have so. I mean, what did we measure your external rotation at? It was 65. How much? 65. External rotation? It probably 165. I'm gonna look it up right here. I bet you this is gonna tell something about you, which I think at this point is just gonna be kind of theory. Let's see. I've got it right here. Your maximum external rotation was 165, which is the most I've ever measured in a camp. Seriously, I've never measured 165. And we were talking about how it's freakish. So here's the thing. I, even in... Watch, watch this. If I pull up... If I pull up that all-pass... I'm going to kill all these but your wrist. And I'm going to do the same thing for him. Watch this. You see this little hitch right here? Yeah. You don't see that in him. I remember when I was tracking it, I was like, I've never seen that. Okay. We were talking with you how you need to stay in horizontal abduction because you want to go up into early external rotation. See right here, your arm is, is cocked and you haven't fully landed. If we take him back there. He does it too, right? Yeah, I guess he's up early. But his is more extended. Or no, it's not. I think it looks like it's up. His is fully cocked right there. That's his full cocked position right there. Let's see. I don't know. It could be because you're more inside 90. It could be you're up maybe a little bit earlier than him. But this stall out, watch how your, your wrist stalls out right here. Look, it just stalls out. Yeah. Okay. 
Watch his, his upper body going through. He keeps moving. Anyways, his trunk, if his trunk was yours, it would, it would move even better. He'd throw even harder. So we're always looking for a break in the kinetic chain. This is theory. So just seeing your kinetic chain moving majority better, but then seeing his elbow and wrist speeds picking up past yours tells me that this little break here, this little stall, is strictly because you have so much play in your arm. So you have so much play in your arm, it's when your arm starts to go back, it just goes back so quickly and easily. And think about it, that's the catapult, that's the tension, right? That's that's what we're trying to get the energy it, it up that joint and out. And at that point, it's got so much play that it's stalling out and it's really not a, it's kind of like when you do your med throws and I kept telling you, you kept bending your arm and just throwing your head out and nothing was coming out of your hands. It's the same thing. It's like taking the bow and arrow and breaking the, one of the tips, like the top end of the bow and just breaking it. And, and it's just hanging there and it, what it would do to the full elastic chain, right? So I'm just intrigued by this whole process. This is just theory that you have so much play in your external rotation that there's no spring. Like there, there's no, there, it's, it's killing the transfer because when it gets up to that part, that it just, it's loose. It's like a loose rubber band just flopping around. Does that make sense? Yes, it is fixable. You know, it's fixable. Get less? Get, get, no, get your bench press up to like 300 pounds because it, it'll just put more tension. It will kill a little extra rotation, but more importantly, it'll put more more tension here's the thing is you could still keep your range of motion but the moment you start pulling back you'll imme immediately feel tension in the, in the in the arm and the same thing same thing with your lats your lats are connected to that so if you're if your chest if we could add like two inches out on your chest you know because you said your bench press is poor right it's like it's terrible it's not in my body but... yeah your bench press is poor this that's your key your upper body gets, you know, if you're you're pressing over, you're, you're 250, if you're pressing over close to 400 pounds, which you should, this goes away. And I guarantee you, if right now, if I could bless you with 400 pounds, you'd be throwing 90 plus like, like Josiah. So, Steven, you miss this. This thing is pretty, I've never seen this before. He beat him on everything but elbow and wrist speeds. And hit. Oh, and hit. More contralateral tilt, more hip to shoulder separation, more speed, more force in the ground, more trunk, more trunk. But I remembered when I tracked his arm, see the little dip? See Josiah's? Josiah's arm never stops going. His stops right there because he has so much external rotation. Remember, his external rotation is the most we've ever measured. We've yeah. never measured 165. Yeah. So when he went into shoulder rotation, there was so much play. The arm was just like, and it took longer to come around. It's a break in the chain. Well, it's like taking the whip and going to the end of the whip and stretching it out and making it so floppy that you have this nice tense whip the whole way, but the end's this little floppy string. Wow. I know. So I, I look, he's doing push-ups. <laughs> so seriously, he says his bench press is the is the weakest thing on his body. So if he, think about it, if he built his upper body strength higher to where one, the arm might, we could still keep the arm going back, but it would keep tension longer. I guarantee you wouldn't see that break and he'd transfer it. It'd be more springy. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think? Yeah, that's cool. I found something really cool too now that you should do with David, but it's really helping me. I'll show you in a second when you're done. All right, well, let's finish this. So, any other questions? What do you think? I'm baffled. <laughs> It's all because my upper body strength is poor. Think that I'll get over 90 if I fix it. I think it's see. To me, I never stress upper body strength till the end because I want to see a kinetic chain like you have. Now that's the icing on the cake. If you had more tension in your upper body, the point is your upper body flexibility is like Too if much. I yeah I know like look at your 
Look at your hip internal. Your hip internal is 20. That's below average. Your hip external is 30. That's average. Your dorsiflexion is 10, below average. Your hip extension is 15, below average. Your hip flexion is good. That's why your trunk gets out 100. That's above average. And then your external rotation is 165. That's like freakish. So it's like... I've never even seen someone come close to that in here. Like when you did it, I was like... Whoa! So here's the thing. I thought it helped me. I mean, it will help you, but it's like it's it's really the rubber band effect. Yes, you can pull your rubber band back, but there's no tension in it. It's just flopping around. So even even though I'm going further back, there's still no tension. It's still it's just floppy. Like your the the engine, the arms that you're using to pull it back are strong as shit. That's your body. But you pull this rubber band back and it's flopping around. I can see your arm when it moves right here. Watch when your arm moves. Watch, just look at the play in his arm. Like it looks like, it looks like it, with the way it loaded back, it looks like it was gonna explode, and it literally looks like it's taking forever to come through, as opposed to Josiah. Watch his arm. I mean, once his arm loads, it takes off. Watch. Once his arm loads, watch how much quicker it takes off. Yeah. So much faster it takes off. Yeah, it's fast. It's like you're pulling yours through. It, it, his looks more like a rubber band. Yours looks like a string. Like you're trying to pull it through, and then that's why your head's down, and you're like, to, and you're trying to pull it down. Well, what was going on in his back leg though too? Because he he kicks really hard and wants to get all of his momentum going forward. So what was going on in his back? He leg still back? got his hip through. He got his hip through, except his your hip speeds are lower. So I still would say, because I'm telling Josiah his legs are poor. I still would say. Because you got, you had a good front leg, you had great front leg force production, you have great front leg flexion, hip flexion. So you're relying on a lot of flexibility and a lot of weight hitting your front leg. So you still need to get your back leg better, and because you need to get your hip speeds a little better. So what's good for the back leg for me? What? What's, what'll be good for the back leg for me? That's all of our drive stuff. Like you're, you're already no, maxing no, I mean, out. No. Force, force wise. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I mean, if you hit 1,900 on your front leg, I'd like to see 13. I don't know. 11 out there. The yeah, middle. I'd like to see maybe 12, 13. That'd be awesome because I think that's what – no, he hit 10 on front leg. The, most importantly, your arm is your brake in your chain. It doesn't, it doesn't have the tension that's in the rest of your body, and it's, it lags as opposed to it, it spring, you know. Which I don't stress that. I usually don't stress it because most people don't have the ability to, to put it together. What's going on? But it's with, it's really obvious with you. What's going on with his horizontal abduction? Do you think the bench the lack of strength in the chest and and subsequently the back as well it keeps him from horizontally abducting more? Because like he does this weird path that like he just early arm cocks a little bit. I, I don't think it's so much that problem, but working on that would keep him in later arm cocking. I think. He just he's he's up a little early. But it would put more cut. that would alone would put more tension into the arm, right? Him horizontally abducting and I don't for think more if, energy to, I think if his to come up. if he doesn't have strength enough strength and then because to tell you the truth, 165 degrees of external rotation is joint laxity. It's just it's too it's too much. You don't have that in the rest of your body. It's like I see that joint laxity in a 12 year old. But I also see it in their hips and everything else. It's like you got like a 12 – I'm sorry. Don't take this wrong. You got like a 12-year-old's arm, uh, like a 25-year-old's body, like as far as the joint laxity. But that doesn't make sense because he, he did that with all active range. It wasn't like he got to a range and we passively pulled him back, like showing that he had that range of motion, just no strength to do it. He actively – yeah, but I don't think his put it back. That that means you would go to grab his arm. You'd be like, man, Brent, feel how tight this is. I don't think it's tight. I don't think I could have pulled it. Any, like if I had went, I didn't even try to pull it. But so like, there's active range of motion, like where you're literally using your own body to put it back as far as you can, and then you can take passive range where we give you a little extra to yeah. see what more range of motion is there. But it's not you're you're just lacking strength to put yourself in that position. I was saying that I'm, you did it 165 degrees. Dude, this is, there's nothing here, dude. That doesn't, it's not tensing. There's either. literally nothing in your arm. Like, you feel, I feel like. Get up there, go pull on his arm and tell me. There's no tension in his arm at all. Just get over here, let's arm wrestle really quick. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, I'm I'm putting money on this. I feel like you have too much laxity in your shoulder. But I I just wouldn't like I I, I agree with you, but um for him I would still think like just he needs to concentrate as well on that on his back leg drive. I get it. I understand that because I tell I'm telling just side the same thing. I mean you'd want to throw 95, right? He does everything better than just I, except for the hip, barely, just barely on the hip, and the elbow and wrist. And his trunk is so much better. His front leg's a little better. Stride length was an inch farther. I mean, he's almost identical to him, but he had a better trunk, and that that should be enough. But when you see how that arm lagged right there, when it went into cocky, I've never seen an arm completely stop. And Josiah's arm comes and stretches all the way this way. And he's coming up. That's he's what I'm saying, the horizontal back. abduction. Because when yeah. we went on the med ball drills and we have him pinch back, he hit 38 on that one where he, like, pinched it back and, and it all, all unloaded. Okay, I mean, all right, I'll give him that. If you if you try that, – but that's the whole late arm cocking. Yeah. If you just try to be a little bit later on your arm cocking, yeah. you, you'll get some tension being in more horizontal abduction, elbow behind your back. Mm-hmm. But the point is when it lays up and it goes back, it's still going to go 165 degrees. It's just going to go – like think about it. It'd be like your pa- your the. What if I took a catapult? What would happen to a catapult if I took a catapult, not only just back but down and under? Would that help? No. I think it actually. I mean, I don't know physics enough. I, I think that would actually hurt the, the end result. You just if it sh- if you want to shoot it straight that way, you just want to go straight back. You don't want to start going under, which is what he's doing. His arm's going under. Yeah. Look. Look how far his wrist is under his elbow yeah. at that point. Yeah, it's excessive. Is that the external rotation? Mm-hmm. And then if you look at Josiah's, look. Wouldn't you want more than Josiah? But yeah, you would want a little more, but definitely not that much that that you have. I'm telling you, dude, that's a big problem. That's called a break in the chain. And that's why it's stalling out right at that moment. Your it, The momentum is stalling out. It's like it's having to start all over again, and your body's out. And there's no tension in it, and you, and you feel like you're pulling a rope through as opposed to releasing a rubber a rubber band. That makes sense. And then, so I fix this. I get bench it. press. I'm telling you, be, I, I would put money on it. You go and bench 350. You're throwing 90 plus with those mechanics. Huh? Would y'all y'all wouldn't even want to take that bet, would you? No, because his legs are better. Look at look at where his knees yeah, are compared to him. Yeah, it is better. Extended his hips and his trunk goes farther. How much you want to bet? Let's put money on it. You bench 350. You're one of my testimonials. I'm bankrupt. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just put Monopoly money on it. Uh, when I when I sign a major league deal. No, I don't want your money. I'm just saying. Let, let's do that. Let's let's go for that. I mean, so should I put more upper body stuff on my hatch? Mm-hmm. I would. A yeah, a lot more. And what about like the back too? Of course. Yeah, we're gonna do a lot more. Do more pulls. Let's double up on pulls and presses. I keep throwing all the. All the yeah. I think you're so lucky, man. Not many guys your size can move that well. No, that, but have that much upper body mobility. Like. Yeah, but it's not really doing any good. I mean, but it's well, still what, a good what, place but to what be. we're saying is, yeah. you could literally get yoked, and it'd be perfect for you. You'd be Brian Wilson. You know. It's awesome.